is uh, with Gemini, another thing that we're doing is we're improving um, the look of, um, we're, we're adding generative, we have generative backgrounds and we also have what's called studio look and studio lighting. So unfortunately, um, it, it won't work on these two laptops because these are cool. i3s. The models run on the laptops directly. So these two laptops are, I think are i5s, so they'll work. So what I'd like you to do is exit the meeting. It's a little bit bigger on this screen, so that's why I want you to exit. I want you to click on weekly check-in, but I don't want you to join it. And you'll notice in the right-hand side, there's a little, um, there's a little uh, effects button. So if you hit that effects button, Yep, and I'd like you to go to appearance. So here's the effects button, click on that. Go to appearance. And you'll notice the first thing, studio lighting. The Right here, these are two different light sources. So you can grab one of those uh, light sources and you can place it somewhere. And then you could choose the light color and then the intensity of that light. Oh, sorry, I'm recording, but... Uh... And so that's Studio Light with Gemini. Just a moment. And these models run locally on the device. Your laptop doesn't, doesn't have it. I just wanted to see what, yeah. what it shows. Um, all right. Done. That's it. And those are all the demos. Should we play with Studio Look as well? You can play with Studio Look as well, if you'd like. So I press the Studio Look. And that just sharpens the image. All right, yeah, it works. What about Portrait Touch Up? Uh, do you see my screen? I see, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about uh, Portrait Touch Up? What is that? Yeah, portrait touch up is uh, sort of like smoothing yeah, out, smooth, like more filters. Smooth, uh, yeah, yeah, and that, that I'm I'm pretty sure that's been available for a while now. Uh, what, what about the the devices here? The the camera, the Chromebooks. I think this is the Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. What about so, it? So yeah. So these do, are. Do you want to talk about them? Yeah. So this is uh, the Google Me hardware setup. Uh, so inside of conference rooms, you can. This is a dedicated uh, device from Logitech. We've got a, a Chrome box uh, down below, and it's connected to this touch controller. Um, and oh, so. Something. Yeah. There's oh. a the Chrome box is there. So if you have a dedicated conference room space, um, you know, by having a Google Me hardware setup. Uh, you get a few things. One, one touch join. So you'll notice that when you create meetings um, and you set up meetings and you, all of the meetings, uh, when you add the device, can be added directly the on the calendar invites directly on the touch controller. So if you schedule that meeting and you want to just join, I see weekly check-in, I've invited this room. When I hit weekly check-in, it'll just one tap, join, bring me into the meeting. And so um, super easy, so you don't have to use your laptop and hook up a cable to a TV for everybody to see. So that's the BYOD mode. And um, this kiosk here also is a Google product or it's not? Uh, uh, no, 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 this no. is, yeah. This is for the, just for the, the booth, the expo. Yeah, for the expo, okay. yeah. Uh, because I'm I sure saw there like, are facilities uh, like this. Some uh, digital thing here. So I thought that it was linked somehow to, 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 to book a meeting. Yeah. Yeah, there are there are like many solutions around. Actually. Yeah, but I know. Uh, do you have as Google a uh, like a, a tablet or something that we can put on outside? We work shows? with some third-party vendors that do oh, that. Third exactly. Parties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Robin. But Google Meet does not have we don't something integrated there. No. Not not like we don't have an uh, an offering directly. What we we offer we have integrations with third parties that offer booking solutions. Or tablets like that. Actually, is, he knows. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty integrated, but they just don't produce it by themselves because it's another business, right? So they give all the licensing. They license the third-party producers like Logitech. In case for booking uh, the meeting room, there are Robin, there are some Swedish companies. There is pretty choice of... Uh, you can choose from... Different. Lots of flexibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they okay, are licensed but not, not the and fully itself, integrated. Not the device, but the, the application. 
that has to be installed on this device, okay, yeah. that shows the pre-booked meetings. Absolutely, and, and they are fully certified by Google, so they work perfectly with the calendar of the yeah. 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 Well, why not uh, Google don't, don't offer this in the workspace? This is uh, what I mean. Yeah, I, it's a really good question. I think uh, there are a lot of great players that have really um, in-depth, complex solutions. And so instead of trying to build one, we, we'd rather just partner with Compete one. Compete against your partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that there are really great solutions that are available for that. I will say the, you know, the advantage of having um, a, a kit like this inside of your conference rooms um, the user benefits are pretty clear in terms of like one touch join, don't have to worry about fussing. Because a lot of times people can waste like 10 minutes just getting their laptop signed in, plugging up a cable, making sure that um, the BYOD stuff is working end to end. But here you walk in, push a button, boom, you join the meeting. The other part is that it is, um, uh, you can fully manage that. So in the admin console, there's a Google Meet hardware uh, section where you can manage all the devices, make you understand where all the updates are, you can apply settings and policies to these devices, um, you know, you could set the defaults of all of these things, you can check the health. Um, so being able to fully manage that solution and understand insights. I'll give you an example, like room occupancy. We started out talking about room occupancy being a lot of challenge, uh, being a challenge okay. for a lot of people. Room occupancy, like okay. how often are rooms okay. being used and like utilization utilization of those rooms um, so like there are organizations that struggle with like I don't have there's no conference room free for me to take this meeting right and then you see that there's no one in the conference room right they'll book it and then no one's using it um, and so we have a but like a uh, our dashboard offers insights to give you in, in, insights into seeing utilization of these rooms how often they're being used um, so the full how does it do that does it like scan the room to see the number of people and log it yeah, so we have uh, what's called um, room occupancy detection, so okay. we can detect when there are people in the room, and we can also count the number of people that are in the room as well. Okay. That data is specific to you and your domain. Google doesn't have access to that information. It's all used to help you understand the utilization of your rooms yeah. and your organization. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, my, my client's office is, you can't get a room, and then they're never used, and it's not, there's tons of different solutions, but they're not. Yeah, having one thing that connects it all would save a lot of people in time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, of course. Cool. Any other questions I can answer? No. No. Well, wondering for just like guests, if you set up a meeting with someone and or yeah, a, a regional thing that they're not on workspace, can they come in and get translations? You know, there could be multiple reasons they might not have it. So again, like so, so, like take notes for me. If the meeting organizer has the SKU, then then it'll do the summary for everyone if they're external. For like automatic translations, they're not going to get it if they don't have that SKU, even if the meeting organizer does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's case by case. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, great. So let's um, let's move on. We're going to talk about dynamic layouts and dynamic tiles. So representation equity is really important. I'm going to step um, side too. And so like, today you'll you'll see here. This is the room view. Right, and we've got a bunch of names here because all of you checked into the room. It shows all of our names. Um, and so what we're doing is we're introducing dynamic tiles and dynamic layouts. And, and what, what dynamic tiles does is it'll, it'll look uh, for the three faces that are in the room and now split you into individual tiles, which is pretty cool. And so the second that you do that, you'll notice that you'll get a little pop-up and ask which, which one is you? Yeah. And it wants to know your face, right? So once you know your face, and I, it doesn't show on here, so I'm gonna do it on my laptop so you can see a, a live demo of this. I'm gonna join that same meeting. Effective cost management strategy. And all of your faces are now in three separate tiles with names. So mm -hmm. all of your names now are, you have proper attribution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And what's also great about this is that you can pin those, because now everyone is in their own tile, I can now pin one person to be on the, to be on the stage, yeah. yeah, to be spotlight. Um, and that is also great when you are in a situation when there's a presentation and there's multiple people in the room, you can just pin that one person. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is that we moved uh, away from landscape uh, square tiles to portrait. So mm -hmm. we're improving portrait framing to, to mm -hmm. improve how people are represented inside of meetings.
last, okay, very last demo. Um, that will talk about take notes for me next. All right, so I'd like everyone to exit the call. All right, and I'm gonna join the 12.30 quarterly business review meeting. And we do as well. Yes. yes. And when you join the quarterly business review, uh, join join it in companion mode. mode. So exit. So when you join, there's a little button here that says use companion mode. So click on that and check into the room. Yep, hit check in. So what companion mode is? It's an experience that's optimized for conference rooms. So if you, you have mean the companion. Yeah, co yeah, yeah companion right. mode. So companion mode is an experience optimized for conference rooms. And so its purpose is to um, make it so that everyone can participate, whether on a laptop or on their personal device uh, in a meeting without having to have all the tiles and deal with the echo. Um, this is really meant for you to represent yourself in that meeting. Um, so what we're gonna talk about here with Gemini is we're, we're talking about dynamic layouts and dynamic tiles. So one of the, the Oh, sorry. We're talking about take notes for me first. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so take notes for me. Um, so so today we have uh, transcriptions and we have recordings in, available uh, in certain SKUs. So if you turn on transcriptions and you set a language, it'll do a transcription word for word, everyone speaking in the meeting. Take notes for me. What it does is it's paying attention to the context of the meeting um, and it's generating insights um, and summarizing the entire conversation. And that summarization is updating in real time as the meeting is going on. In addition to giving those summaries, it's also generating a series of action items. So what I'd like you to do is in the upper right, there's a little pencil icon. If you were to click on that, you'll see the summary and you'll notice it says summary so far, right? And that summary is going to get updated when it learns more about what's happening in the meeting. Okay, now what you're seeing up here, this is a bot. There's a bot that's, that's reading a script. And the reason why it's reading a script is we want to have useful notes to talk about here in this demo. Take notes for me is live. It is actually doing this live, but we're just having these bots like read off the script so that you can see the summary that it's actually generating. Um, so that summary throughout the meeting will get updated. You'll see in line, it'll, it'll say that it's updated. Those action items will continue to get, will build up as the meeting continues. Um, and you and and the way that that also works is that it, it listens to say like, oh, you know, John needs to complete this report by Monday and then it'll add John needs to complete this report by Monday. Uh, so it doesn't matter if the person is in the meeting or not, it'll still generate those action items. But by the way, we can't see anything on our screens. I'm sorry? We can't no. see anything. Right, so that's companion mode. So in companion mode, when you're uh, in a room, okay, because we are like, here in the you, room. you yeah, want yeah. to, this okay. is where you're paying attention and this is really meant to for see. you to, you know, for, um, for you to use things like hand raise and chat and, and activities. Um, but if someone like share the screen, if you share can the see screen, it. you see, you can see yeah, it here. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So, um, when the meeting is over, you'll notice at the bottom, it says notes, quarterly business review. Um, it, it will create a document if there's no document to choose from. So you can actually say appends an existing notes document. So let's say you already have a recurring meeting and a recurring notes doc attached to the meeting invite. And you'll notice, by the way, it just said latest update. So you can see that more stuff just was added um, because it learned more information. Um, so that, <clears throat> So if you have a recurring document attached to your calendar invite, um, you can choose to have the, the summary be added to that, or you can create a new um, a meeting summary document. So this one is gonna create a new one called Notes Quarterly Business Review. It's owned uh, by the meeting organizer. So whoever the meeting organizer is gets this document and they are responsible for disseminating it through uh, to everyone else in the meeting, just like all the other artifacts that exist today. Any questions about Take Notes for Me? For all of these features, every person need the Gemini license, or is it just who hosts the meeting, or 
I'm not sure if the... Okay. So I know there. other people have said that depending on what it is. That's no, a, yeah. I think only the, the host uh, should have the So it's a great question because some of the features we have known the host like pick no for me is because it's a shared content and yeah. some of the features is more individual like that depends on the user itself. So but the thing is like they may not see <coughs> this like a life, cut, life summary but they will be able to also get the artifacts out to them as well. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen Jack, I think you should have a license if you want to. Yeah, well, should, I mean, yeah. otherwise you won't have this magic pencil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ideally, we usually recommend to you buy more and for some yeah. actually they work together. So it's just the stuff that's going to is that um, conference rooms are can tend to be overbooked and there's not enough space for everybody, and so some folks have to go and um, sit in a, a corner somewhere with one or two people to take a meeting and it's really uncomfortable not a great experience when there's three people huddled over a laptop and people do this because if they try to use their own laptop there's echo and it just it doesn't work very well um, so we've we've solved that problem today here here's what I'd like um, each of you folks to do I'd like each of you to on your laptop there is a 1230 meeting called weekly check-in customer satisfaction and I'd like you to join that meeting and what happened was it immediately saw that um, the three of you um, are in that meeting and you should see a little pop-up saying that it has joined the audio right so I'm gonna do that with you so I'm gonna join 1230 weekly check-in and um, it, it may echo for a second and then all of a sudden it stopped. And what just happened was we are now one giant like mesh uh, speaker mic essentially. All of our microphones are turned on and they are all available and we're all being treated as the active speaker, which is great. So that means all of us could be sitting in a, in a, in a space somewhere without having Google Meet hardware, um, using our own laptops and um, anyone on the call will be able to hear us clearly as the active speaker. Well, and you can, something you know that you really at the end of Q2. Huh? Yeah, end of Q2. Yeah. And so um, it just to, to dig into this a little bit more, you see your screen, all three of our tiles are highlighted blue. Mm -hmm. That means that we are all the active speaker. If you turn on captions, for example, you'll see that it says Margot, Nisha, and two others. Um, so the attribution that you're seeing in captions, it's treating all of us as the active speaker which is great. So that means um, uh, we're, we're not gonna have that, that echo issue and we can use our own personal devices for uh, input into the call. And if someone was calling into the meeting right now, you would actually, if all our speakers are turned on, it would sound like stereo. The, all, all the sound would be coming through the speakers and it would be completely in sync. Um, now, um, next let's talk about uh, the power of Gemini and how that's impacting meetings today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is translated captions. What I'd like you to do is if you move your mouse just a little bit, you'll see in the upper, you'll see on the right hand side, there's a little cog wheel and it says English. So I'd like you to click on that. Uh, yeah. 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 No, it should come up around here. Move your mouse up. Here you oh, go. Gosh. Okay. And you see captions and it says language of the meeting is English, right? Language of the meeting is English. And what I'd like you to do is turn on translated captions. If you speak another language, choose the language of, that you speak. Um, I don't, so I'm just gonna pick Let's German. And once you apply yeah. that, what it's going to do is, it's not doing a word for word translation. Gemini understands the context of your conversation, right? And so um, it should actually translate it to be more natural language than just a word for word translation. So it understands that context. Yes. Excuse me. Can I use beta now, or beta is something that will come later? No, you can use it. Too. I you can use it now. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, that's perfect. What language are you trying to use? I'm coming from Central Eastern Europe. We speak. I'm Ukrainian. We'd love to speak Ukrainian, but we see Russian. It helps a lot. It's solving the issue. Do you see Russian as yeah, a? I see are you running it as a beta? Yeah. And so you selected it. Yeah. yeah okay. So I now, see, see. so now I'm curious. Like as we're talking, uh, as a as a native. Uh, uh, Russian speaker, how is the translation for you? Does, is, does it feel natural? It's pretty, it's not bad. It's pretty, it's solving the issue we have right That's now. great. Yeah. That's great. Good job, guys. 
Yeah, and it'll only get better over time, obviously. Uh, we're gonna launch with 69 languages um, as part of uh, the first launch, and then we'll continue to add more languages. Well, yeah. It's yeah. important to note that the way that this translation works is that you have to set the, the language of the meeting first, and then it'll translate from that language like English into the target language like Russian. It won't do multi multilingual translation. So if you start speaking Russian and I set mine to like translate to, to Rush, uh, translate from Russian to English, it's not going to work. So no problem. Right. So so long so as you have to speak English, everyone has to speak English in order to translate it to the right. So that first target. that first uh, option at the top there, it, it asks what the language of the meeting is. So once you set the language of the meeting, then you can choose the target translation, and then it'll do that. Uh, right now, the most options are English to other languages. So if you were to um, yeah, so over time we're just going we're going to improve this experience. Uh, uh, One thing to add, long term wise, we will automatically detect the language you are speaking and be able to do translation like, at a real time as well. So, so mm. let's do this. So uh, I'm going to change the for me the language of the meeting to Russian, and we're going to translate it to English. Um, I, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to I'd love to hear you speak some Russian and, and, and see what it says. We have to change it as well. Yeah, yeah we so have to change, change the top one. Yeah, to change Russian. the top one to Russian. Can you speak Russian then? No, I don't. I can. Yeah, no, but I'd if, love you if, you, speak, if you can you speak it, then we can hear what you're saying. This is Russian? Okay, so uh, we said change we up. just changed yeah. the meeting language to Russian, and so with Gemini we changed the language to Russian, and we're going to translate it to English, and we okay. have a native Russian speaker in here in this meeting. Okay, you can yeah turn it. Yep. So, здравствуйте. Дорогие друзья, очень приятно вас видеть и смотреть эту презентацию. Это демо, демонстрацию. Путин хуйло, но в любом случае мы очень удивлены тем, как вы делаете, как вы развиваете продукт Google Meet. Мы очень любим Google Meet, мы используем его каждый день, и мы все очень ждем всех новых инноваций, которые вы делаете с помощью AI и с помощью вашей чудесной команды. Спасибо. Я очень рад быть приглашенным на это демо. Thank you. Wow. That was great. Thank you. That was great. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, as a, being totally native US, I'm like, okay, cool, cool. But that's that's a really cool way to see yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flip around. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. So.